Hi, and welcome to the ANCODA Training Academy. Let's get started. Hello, and thanks for watching today's video, which is really a walkthrough of a resource called the Ultimate Guide to Electronic Visit Verification in 2020. This is a web resource that you see here. And as I scroll down a slight bit, uh, what you'll what you'll see is that there's an introduction with a video. And by the way, this is a, a short video that explains all about what EVV or electronic visit verification is. And then the resource you know, goes into uh, a set of chapters and it, it really breaks it down for you. So I'll do a walkthrough, but why, I guess first question is like, why are so many people asking about EVV or electronic visit verification today? This is like, I'd say a top, a top trending topic in home care today. And the reason is, and we'll, we'll illuminate this in a minute, is that this is really something that is uh, changing the industry. And the purpose of it is to make sure that uh, all home care is delivered well and that there's proof that the care was delivered and there was no fraud involved and all that kind of thing. And, you know, bottom line jumping ahead is that in each of the 50 states, if you're providing home care that is going to be reimbursed by the government, so that would be the Medicaid or the Veterans Administration, and even if you're not, this is becoming the standard of care in all of home care. So without further ado, let me walk you through the guide. So first of all, there's this great video. It's about a minute and a half, and it, it explains the, the basics. And next is, you know, we'll kind of walk through the chapters. The first one is, where did EVV come from? And, uh, you know, bottom line is, on, uh, there's an unfortunate reason for this, is that in the history of home care in the era of, let's say, paper timesheets, there's been fraud and abuse, and people, you know, fabricated records and that was proven and some people went to jail and uh, that uh, kind of thing. So this is where it came from. And jump into the next chapter, it talks about the, uh, the legislation for this. So basically at the end of 2016, uh, there was with very strong bipartisan support, a law that was enacted called the 21st Century Cures Act. And that this is not just the EVV Act. There's a whole bunch of things in that law that make healthcare better. But the uh, the 21st Century Cures Act is what brought this into law. So, what does EVV require for you to do as a home care provider? Well, what it needs you to do is that every time you do a home care visit, you need to capture as part of that visit what was the type of service, who received the service, the date of the service. I see I have a typo here, it should say date, not data. Uh, the location where it was delivered, who provided that, that service, meaning like the name and identification of the home care agency, and then the exact start time and end time. So here the, um, you know, really, if you've been doing home care in the past, you're already doing the type of service, uh, the individual rece receiving the service and the date of service, and that's what you're submitting, you know, with your claims, and you're basically saying, okay, we did, uh, you know, three hours of service, or in the case of the Medicaid world, uh, don't worry if you don't understand this part, but, you know, 12 units of service because Medicaid generally pays 15 minutes at a time and that sort of thing. So that, you know, you've been doing this all along, but now they're asking more. They're saying, well, who is the caregiver? And tell me, you know, it's great that you did three hours of care, but I want to know exactly what time they arrived and exactly what time they finished. And then this one here is the hardest part is the location where the service was delivered. And we're gonna cover you know, how that is picked up. But the short answer is it's usually uh, the GPS on the app where the person reported it, or there's also an app that's called Telephony where the caregiver calls in from the client's home phone and it uses caller ID for that. So that's kind of a little preview. All right, so the next question is, you know, why do we talk about EVV on a state-by-state -state basis? And the answer to that is that, um, you know, if we think of the federal, you know, national health insurance of the United States, we have Medicare, which takes care of the elderly and disabled, and then we have Medicaid, and the Medicaid takes care of the poor, and Medicaid is administered on a state-by-state -state basis, so the Medicaid programs uh, in California can be very different and have different rules than Missouri or New Jersey or Massachusetts and that type of thing, and that's why it's talked about on a state by state basis and you, you need to make sure that you are you know complying with your state and as a home care agency it's even more detailed than that i mean you're going to have to not only collect this information for an audit 
but you're either going to need to be providing this information you know, to the state as part of your claims or sometimes uh, as an additional uh, you know, side piece of information. In addition to sending in your claims, you're also going to have to send your EVV electronic visit verification data to some uh, organization that aggregates that information and essentially can audit you remotely. So that's what's going on there. Okay, so then uh, digging a little bit deeper into the states is that each state can provide, you know, how they want to, you know, deploy this. And there's there's a couple different models. So one is called the provider choice model, where they say, okay, you're a home care provider, you decide what home care software you want to use, and uh, and then they'll provide rules that your home care software vendor will need to follow for passing this EVV information to the state. And uh, so that's provider choice. Okay, this one is, and I've kind of made it very, uh, you know, I, I've spelled it out a little bit in more detail than what you would see in the literature, but there are some, you know, many states actually that provide a solution where, you know, you could use the state solution and you know it'll it'll generally I mean get the job done for you and it'll say hey there's some free software you could use to do the EVV but it might not be you know tied into your um, you know your whole agency management it might not have all your client details or your uh, your payroll and it won't you know do your uh, you know help you do your payroll and and really understand your schedule and you know help uh, find caregivers for open shifts and that kind of thing so you could have a state provided solution. Uh, and, you know, the good news about that is it might be free, but limited. And then you also have the idea to, or the option rather, to make the choice of your own and choose your own software. So here is an example from Indiana where it says, all right, you could use Sandata, which is a state sponsored uh, EVP solution, or you could use an alternative. And by the way, I mean, um, the people making this video, we're called Ancoda, and we make a, a software program for managing a home care agency. And, uh, you know, so if you, let's say we're in the state of Indiana and you said, okay, I looked at what I could get from Sandata, it doesn't really meet my needs. I want some other software, then you could look at Ancoda or another vendor. So that's what that means. All right, so moving down a little bit further, then there's, uh, in some states, they've actually outsourced the program to what's called managed care. So they'll say, okay, like in the state of, um, you know, Virginia, they actually have six managed care organizations that they've outsourced the Medicaid uh, program to. And, you know, I know one's called Virginia Premier and one's called Anthem. And, uh, you know, so there's there's all these different six. And then what they're saying is that the managed care organization, they can decide, you know, how you need to do EVV and kind of sticking with the Virginia example. So, for example, um, Anthem, which is one of the managed care organizations and and by the way, most of these are insurance companies. They've said, you know, we need you to use a certain aggregator software called Telus for sending your EVV information. Is where the others, you know, Virginia Premier and, um, you know, and and the other MCOs uh, in the state have said, you know, hey, no, you you could put the EVV information in your claims, and then you could use a clearinghouse. I'm getting way too deep here, but bottom line is that. Uh, Another way it might work is that the managed care organization might choose how it goes. And then, you know, lastly, it's um, that, you know, you could have a state mandated solution. So the, the state mandated solution, they might say, hey, for you to provide EVV in our state, then you need to, you know, use this, this specific solution. And that's your only choice. All right. So kind of moving on, I'm going to actually come back to this piece because this takes you to another page, which goes through everything we know about what's going on in EVV in each of the 50 states. So I'm gonna come back to that one. And just kind of moving down the guide further though. So I referred to this in the beginning, there's different methods for identifying the location of the service. So the first uh, one here, although I would say that um, even just a few years ago, this was the most used one was called telephony, where what happens is the caregiver calls you know, on like a home phone, this isn't the caregiver cell phone, it's the home phone of that uh, client or consumer re receiving care. And what happens is that they, they, they call from that number when they get there, they call when they leave, and they use the touchstone keypad to report their work. And it uses caller ID 
something a little bit more technical called ANI, but you know, really, you know, from layman's perspective, it's caller ID for verifying the location of that service. And uh, what I believe is now probably, you know, become the more popular one as everybody's gotten smartphones is to do this on a mobile app. And with the mobile app, what it's doing is it's actually connecting, you know, just like when you use your Google Maps to get your directions, your phone knows where you are. And using that same technology, which comes from global positioning satellites or GPS, it grabs the location that your caregiver is when they cock in and cock out. And, you know, what happens there is that if the caregiver is like, hey, I'm running late and I'm just going to cock in from my house and I, you know, I haven't driven there yet, I'll get there in 15 minutes, they'll never know. And in a sense, they are committing fraud. You're going to know that now because when they cock in, it's going to say, hey, they weren't at, um, you know, they weren't at the client's home phone, they were on the line in the Starbucks and that kind of thing. You're gonna know that right away. And then this third method, and some states are saying this is good to go and some are saying not, is this thing called a FOB, we call it a fixed object, but you know, bottom line is it's a little device that looks like this and you have to affix it in the home. So you see how it has this little tab here. So you would literally connect it to like a drawer pull in the home. And when the caregiver gets there, they push this button, it gives them a code like this one, 641966. And then every one of these has its own, um, you know, secret encryption code on the back that, you know, you have to program in. But bottom line is if, if you, you know, were at this particular client's home and you got the number 641966, it would know the specific date and time when that um, six digit code was, was generated. And the key there, of course, is that this has to be fixed in the home. And like I said, some states are allowing this and some are not. All right, let's keep kind of moving down the page. So so then, you know, like um, now we're kind of moving more into the change management aspect of things. So there's a lot of people they've been in, you know, the home care business. They've done a good job. They've really focused on getting great caregivers. And the, this technology is a little bit, um, you know, daunting for them. And, you know, and, and change is hard for everybody. So, um, you know, having said all that, we're trying to give some some recommendations here. So one is that, you know, this is not something that's going away, you know, so the, so the first recommendation is, you know, is, is um, you know, grit your teeth, you're going to have to do it and get on board. And uh, second is that, you know, like this idea of some agencies are only using that telephony, you know, so they're only using that uh, caller ID method for verifying things. But, you know, as I bet that most of the people listening to this video who would be, you know, somebody running a home care agency, a younger person, not somebody receiving home care, you probably don't have a, ho a home phone anymore unless you've lived in your, your home for a while and have it as part of a bundle or you don't really use your home phone anymore because, you know, you, I mean, you have your cell phone and everybody has their individual cell phone is with you all the time. So, you know, most younger people haven't, like, you know, my kids will probably never have a home phone in their lifetime and that type of thing. And some elderly people are kind of getting on board with that as well. They're like, well, you know, hey, I have a, a smartphone and I use it for connecting to my, my kids and my grandkids. And they're saying, you know, why don't I just use this and not use the home phone? Well, part of that visit verification with telephony requires that it be a home phone because, you know, if somebody dials in from that, uh, that home care consumer's smartphone, they might not actually be, you know, at that person's house. I mean, they, there could be collusion. You know, the, the person could say, hey, I never used the cell phone or let me just get an alternative cell phone and give it to you and you could cock in from one, anywhere you want. So so really uh, telephony is not going to be enough for, for this, even if you've been doing telephony for a long time. So you really do need to have a solution that um, has, you know, both telephony and a mobile app uh, as part of the solution. And, you know, again, I mean, now that mobile phones are ubiquitous among, you know, pretty much everybody, then uh, this this really shouldn't be a problem anymore. Okay. And then, you know, the next thing as this goes in, you know, people sort of get very, very nervous and they say, you know, oh my gosh, you know, like I have some caregivers who are going to make a mistake now and again, and I'm just not going to be paid for those shifts at all. So that's that's not the case. I mean, you know, it's not live in all the states, but we've not yet seen a state where they're expecting you to be 100% perfect. What they are expecting you to do is have an EVB in, in system in place and have your caregivers use it and then manage the exceptions. So I'd say in a typical agency working with Ancoda software that it's north of 90% of the visits are, you know, fully compliant. We have their, you know, we have their location, we have their times, we have their person. And then, you know, something less than 10% fall, 
flags to the office and it says, oh, the GPS doesn't look right here. Or, you know, hey, this visit was scheduled for two hours and they were there for five hours. Do you want to take a look at that? So, you know, it, it's really just managed by exception. And, and um, you know, bottom line is that when you see those exceptions, it's not like you're not going to get paid for that. It's just that you have to explain what happened. It's like, okay, well, I see that they didn't dial in from the home phone. And what we found out is that the, the home phone was out of the cradle and it lost its charge. So that's why the caregiver called in from their cell phone. And then you back that up with a paper timesheet and you indicate in your system that you do have that paper timesheet as a backup. And, you know, you better really have it because they could come and audit you. But basically, if you go and you tell the state, you know, that we have this error uh, on this one and that we've tracked it down, that we have the documentation for it, they're going to pay for that visit and that claim. And, you know, so the bottom line is that um, this law went into effect and originally, believe it or not, it said that it had to be in effect in all states by January 1st of 2019. And, you know, that date has come and gone. They pushed it to 2020. And then what, what has actually happened again is that, you know, the states, you know, really said, hey, we need more time for this. And I believe all 50 states have, you know, applied to the federal government and said, I need you to give me a good faith waiver. I'm working on this, but I'm not going to have it in place. And um, and the good faith waivers were given until January 1st of 2021. And so now all of a sudden in the second half of 2020, as we're making this video, we see that everybody's you know, jumping on board and all the states are announcing their plans. And uh, but, you know, so you really uh, have to look at this and you know, and, and jump on board right away because uh, I guess as part of, you know, one thing that's important for me to point out is that as an individual agency, even though your state got a waiver and said, hey, I'm not going to have a statewide program for tracking all this EVV information by law, your agency should have had uh, an EVV solution, you know, so you could be audited for EVV as of the beginning of January in 2020. So that's what really should have happened. But, you know, in, in most cases, people aren't there. All right, so then EVV software, um, again, I mean, that's what we do. And we have been, uh, you know, one thing we found in the industry and that we've addressed during COVID and we're proud of is we actually found from a lot of the startup and smaller agencies that they're not, uh, the software vendors don't even want to support them and work with them. And so we actually, not only do we have great EVV software for, you know, large enterprise scale agencies, but we now even have a a solution uh, for Medicaid agency startups that, that goes from $99 a month. So if we could help you with that, let us know. But let me, um, you know, just kind of finish out here. We're, we're in the home stretch is, you know, we have uh, best practices for EVV errors and, uh, you know, and I've covered most of these things, but, um, you know, some caregivers are going to resist, you know, so it's kind of an 80, 20 rule. Some will adopt it right away. Others will, you know, need a little bit of help. We have some ideas here. It's like, you know, just kind of go through it with them, be a little bit patient, you know, show them that it's easy. And once they've done it a couple of times, they're like, oh my gosh, this is easy. I don't know why I was nervous, but it's that more that fear of change than the technology really being complicated. And uh, so that's what I talked about here, the fear. And then, um, you know, make sure that you do review those visits with errors and not just submit them because you need to have the backup for that. And, you know, the state's going to have all your, you know, your GPS or your location information and then, uh, and then make sure to, you know, train your schedulers um, because, you know, your schedulers can, you know, help the caregivers through most of, of those issues. Here's, you know, more things from our blog. And the last thing on this page is this, uh, you know, free EVV book. And what that does, it takes a lot of what I've explained to you here and what's on the page. And it puts it into a, um, you know, a guide that you can uh, take with you, you know. So you can't ask everybody maybe to watch a video or to go look at the web page, but, you know, it kind of prints it out for you. Um, so here I said I would go back to this one, this EDV state by state. So I'm going to go really quickly through this resource. So first of all, I'm uh, I'm clicking the page, and it's going to take me to this other page, and it's EDV state by state. And you know, so as you can guess based on the title, it goes through each of the states, and it says you know what their solution is. So um, yeah, so again, I mean, you know, Ancoda, we want you to use our software, of course, but uh, in the state of Alabama, you can't because they have a state mandated model. And you have to use a software that's called Authentic Care, you know. And I mean, we don't have um, Alabama customers, but sometimes even when the state mandates a system, you know, some people come to us and say, "Well, that's great, but you know, I need your software to help me with my scheduling and, you know, managing my, um, 
you know, like how to fill open ships and all that kind of thing. So, so even in that case, you know, it's, it's not there, but I guess, I mean, the point of this page is that you could go through state by state. It'll tell you, you know, who is in charge of the Medicaid program in your state and that this is uh, generally the person who, you know, filed that, um, good faith, you know, uh, waiver to the federal government that said, you know, hey, this is where our EVV program is going. But in every state, we've tried to put, you know, what the what the state option is. So it sounds like Alaska, they're going to give you a solution that you could use. You know, maybe if, a, if you're a small agency, that'll be great. But you could also use an alternate vendor like Encoda. We've tried to give you, you know, kind of a link to the state website and uh, information like that, you know, and, and here, uh, you know, not only do we have like a little picture of part of the website that we found, but you know, you could click on these links and it'll take you to the page for your state and uh, that kind of thing. So here, you know, interestingly, Colorado has their timeline up and all that sort of thing. So I think at that point, um, you know, I just again wanted to give you just a, a video walkthrough of you know the our ultimate guide to electronic visit verification in 2020. And 2020 again being the most important year because you know, most of you need to be compliant with this by the beginning of 2021. So thanks again for listening and have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching this video from ANCODA. For further information, scroll down and click on the link in the video description below. Have a great day.